Okay, so um, thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, for being here today and for uh, giving us the opportunity to share our work with you. And of course, thanks a lot to the organizers of this event. And I hope you will enjoy our panel and our uh, you are enjoying our panel and uh, will enjoy our research too. So the title of our research is how assimilative primary school education affects insurgency in areas of ethnic conflict. And this is a co-authored work uh, with my colleague Asli Johnson from the University of Washington. Uh, I will start uh, this uh, presentation with a story which will show you two sides of the same coin. So this is this uh, woman on the picture is uh, Sadika Avar, who was once upon a time a heroic national figure by Turkish nationalists because she was a prominent teacher and um, education administrator in the newly founded Republic of Turkey after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. And of course, as you can imagine, these are times where school attendance and school enrollment rates were extremely low, particularly in rural areas. Um, and if you look at Avar's personal bibliography, you notice that Avar or uh, other people like her saw educating and modernizing these children as a mission. And to make sure children are enrolled to schools, she was even um, commuting from village to village to find children that are not enrolled and giving, she was giving them a ride to the school, uh, to the boarding school nearby. So she was really like a heroic education administrator by these uh, nationalist accounts. Um, but if you take a closer look uh, at various bibliographies or studies about that period, uh, we can also understand that one of the biggest motivations of uh, Avar and many uh, educators like her was actually uh, to uh, create Turkish citizens and nations from a very diversely populated area, particularly uh, southeastern Turkey, because this was the area where the region where she was serving, uh, where the majority of uh, Kurdish population in Turkey is located. And of course, this expectation of or this motivation uh, of her is not surprising because education is, of course, a very important public service that is known not to only <laughs> reduce inequalities and um, increase social mobility. Uh, as you will see in the coming slides, it's also being used by states to create nations and to gain citizens' loyalty, which are all factors that help a state to sustain peace in a country in the long run. Okay, so uh, the puzzle here is, despite the pacifying effect of education, we still observe high levels of insurgency in, even in countries with like free and compulsory education and where almost 100% of students are enrolled to an education institution and can get primary school education. Um, this outcome is particularly surprising due to the uh, quote unquote, in the indoctrinization impact of education curricula because we know that by many studies, uh, states have been using education as a tool to imbue um, national values uh, upon society or to create loyal citizens. And uh, they also mention very uh, various uh, stories of success such as French Catalans or uh, creating Italians after creating Italy. So that's why uh, considering this indoctrinization or nation-making impact of education curricula, the increased level of insurgencies today in these countries is uh, still puzzling. And therefore, we are revisiting this question of how, how does mass and compulsory primary education, particularly in the state building era, as that is our scope condition here, affect insurgency participation? Uh, when we look at the literature, we see that education's impact on insurgency participation operates mainly through uh, three channels, um, and they mostly find a negative and pacifying effect uh, with a few exceptions. Uh, first, education can reduce, of course, relative deprivation and grievances uh, by reducing inequalities. 
and greater levels of educational attainment may increase the opportunity cost of joining insurgency and therefore leading to decreased levels of um, insurgency participation. And finally, some studies argue that higher educational attainment decreases the risk of violence by encouraging political participation or by promoting a culture of peace or norms of social cohesion. Um, however, of course, uh, from the perspective of ethnic minorities, equally crucial to these economic decisions uh, or grievances in ethnically and socially divided societies is the threat of losing group identity and your ascriptive privilege and power. And we therefore argue that another impact of education can be its threat to group identity for ethnic minority populations, which may lead to increased levels of insurgency participation. And therefore, we think, despite the overall, uh, despite the overall uh, pacifying effect of primary education uh, in the literature, uh, the overall impact of primary education on insurgency participation is uh, not really conclusive. Therefore, we are re-examining this hypothesis uh, that primary education decreases the likelihood of insurgency. And the empirical setting we are using is Turkey, which is a multi-ethnic and multi-sectarian country. Uh, in this country, Kurds uh, form the uh, majority, the major minority group, which is an ethnic and linguistic group indigenous to the Mesopotamian uh, area. And uh, Alevis are heterodox Muslim communities with links to Shia, Islam, and Sufism. But I should say that although these are also minority groups, they have been politically very much integrated into the founding party of Turkey, the Republican People's Party. And finally, the dominant ethno-religious group is Sunni Turks. And when it comes to the structure of the primary school education in Turkey, uh, we can say that everything was centralized. The financials, I mean, the financial sources were centralized. They were centrally financed. The curriculum was financially determined and administered and monitored through monitors. And of course, it was compulsory and free and in Turkish. So all classes, all uh, uh, classes that you are taking in these schools, regardless of where you are or regardless of your ethnicity, are Turkish. And uh, elective Kurdish courses, classes were only recently um, added to the curriculum. Um, and of course, in addition to these, there is also an enormous emphasis on national pride and Turkishness in uh, official like school books that era, in that era, and it includes everyday rituals such as singing the national anthem or reading the student oath. And if you look at the English translation of this, you will see that this is a very strong uh, anthem actually, which includes words such as, uh, I'm dedicating myself to the Turkish existence or how happy is the one who says I am Turkish. And when we look uh, at this uh, education structure from the perspective of Kurds, um, I think this uh, quote from an official CIA report is very indicative because it says, the Kurd sense of separate identity has not been significantly reduced by the Turkish government's attempts to co-opt and suppress them. Um, if anything, it got even stronger, and this is something I think we can all personally agree looking um, at the recent history. So we are uh, analyzing this question with quantitative data where uh, we over, we very, very major, the majority of data comes from historical archives, specifically village level inventory, district level village inventories and education census. Uh, and more specifically, the variables we are using are uh, school enrollment rates, teachers and schools uh, from village inventories and education census data we compiled. Of course, these were like archives, but uh, we brought these different inventories together and digitized them uh, in order to uh, bring them to a form uh, suitable for quantitative analysis. 
Um, the second data we are using is the Kurdish insurgency data set, which, which is an original data set uh, made by Gunesh Tezger in 2016, which shows the number of insurgents, number of Kurdish insurgents by birth year. Uh, we also use an original ethnicity census. Uh, unfortunately, there is no official data in Turkey on, um, on the ethnicity of settlements or uh, neighborhoods, and therefore um, I'm using, we are using an original village level census data that lists the names of all ethno-religious minority settlements in Turkey. Um, and finally, we use village inventories for many control variables such as landless farmer ratio, land genie, or economic development indicators such as tractors and population. And we also use some geospatial controls such as percentage of villages with road access and percentage of villages with railway access. I'm not going to go through this model, but basically we are using a two-period uh, fixed effects model uh, where the outcome is the number of insurgents at primary school age uh, in time t, and the unit of analysis is district i, and the main uh, main independent variable here is S, which indicates the proportion of villages with a school or in an alternative specification, teachers per village in district I. And of course, X is a number of control variables. Um, of course, we had to identify Kurdish districts in order to uh, see the effect of education on uh, insurgency participation. Um, as I said, we used our original um, ethnicity uh, settlement ethnicity census, or let's say village level uh, ethnicity census uh, for this. So we basically identified the districts in which 100% of villages were Kurdish. Uh, as you can see, these are indicated in uh, black on this map. And of course, there are also some mixed districts where you have both Kurdish villages and Turkish villages. And uh, therefore, we also uh, tried alternative specifications uh, for our sample to uh, form our sample. And finally, I also want to show you that uh, when it comes to the expansion of schools to ethnic minority settlements, we see an enormous increase between 50s and 60s, which is the two time periods we are co covering in our panel data design. Uh, and if you pay attention to the uh, purple area here, you will see that the density of schools was highest in the western part of Turkey, while uh, in the, at the end of 60s, you will see that uh, the density is actually highest in southeastern Turkey, which can give you some ideas about how much edu education infrastructure expanded to ethnic minority settlements uh, in southeastern Turkey to Kurdish districts. And I will come to the results. So uh, controlling for all the control variables and district fixed effects, we find that actually the number of schools per village uh, has a positive relationship with the number of insurgents. So basically, this means that uh, if the state does school like uh, build schools in half of the Kurdish villages in this district that will lead, lead to around 60% increase in the number of insurgents from that district, which is a pretty substantial uh, number. And we also checked the effect of teachers, which gave us a similar number, although it is, uh, the effect size is a little smaller, which means like uh, a 40% change for uh, if you send teachers to half of the villages in the district, in District I, that will lead to 40% uh, increase in the number of insurgents. And finally, we tried uh, these results with alternative specifications. For example, we, I mean, uh, in, in one of them, our sample included Kurdish majority provinces. In another sample, we included Kurdish majority districts. And in the main sample we are using, we used only Kurdish districts and excluded uh, all the mixed districts, and the results didn't change. And this was the same when, when it comes to the effect of teachers per village. So uh, in conclusion, we can say that centralized education based on national curricula in the national language may create a backlash effect and instigate political exclusion and increase insurgency participation. This is uh, what we find here. And more importantly, 
I think it shows that the effect of education on insurgency is not necessarily negative or pacifying. Maybe this may be change, uh, changing by context or setting, but uh, we can definitely say that because it operates through multiple mechanisms, um, education doesn't necessarily lead to a decrease in insurgency participation, and it can even uh, lead to an increase in insurgency participation according to these numbers. Thank you.